uh, the, the teachers' union is not a professional organization uh, seeking to uh, make teachers uh, somehow more professional kinds of teachers. The, it's a special interest group. It's a special interest group that has the goal of power, the goal of higher and higher levels of funding uh, for, for government education because they want to feather they their own nest. They want to have job security. They want to have bigger paychecks. And so uh, th that is what the, uh, the National Education Association and the Michigan Education Association and the various other uh, teachers unions, that's what they really are. They're a special interest group that's uh, going after the public purse, seeking to uh, feather its own nest, seeking to have more and more power over the purse strings. And that's what it is. And so the teachers' union, and, and uh, as, as was mentioned on an earlier program, Brian mentioned that uh, unions in and of themselves are not evil. Uh, God allows us to have voluntary associations. We may uh, associate with other individuals for a particular task that we believe in. That's fine. Voluntary associations are fine. And uh, we do believe in freedom of association. Uh, that is a, a principle that we believe that we have under God. But when uh, teachers' unions become uh, so powerful as they are today, uh, and any little threat, even uh, the threat of just taking a few students out of the public schools in order to teach them at home, and you'll find that uh, the teachers' union will routinely say, this is a terrible thing. Uh, and uh, they do not want to allow the, uh, the private schools, the religious schools to exist. Uh, they, they, uh, they're not in favor of uh, charter schools. I'm not in favor of charter schools either. But uh, anything that would take away power from the teachers and uh, give them power over the public purse and uh, fatten up their paychecks, they're, they're, uh, uh, not, they're not in favor of it. They're, they're, they absolutely oppose it. They are a special interest group. They're not a professional education association. Brian, let's get to a fundamental question here. Who is responsible, biblically, I'm asking now, for the education of children, parents or the state? Yeah, the Bible makes it crystal clear that it is the parents' responsibility for the education of the children. And the parents have a biblical responsibility to make sure that the Christian worldview and the whole law of God and all the Bible is integrated into every subject, even mathematics. Every subject that is taught, music, mathematics, science, everything should be taught from a distinctly biblical Christian perspective. It's very clear. Uh, if you have a Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 6, 4 to 9. It's a classic passage. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Now, that's the positive version of the first commandment. And the first commandment is we are to have no other gods before the Lord. Okay, this is the positive version of that. And that's the starting point of all true biblical religion. God is first. God has to be first in your life. And then it says, and these words which I commend you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. That covers basically all during the day. All during the day, no matter what you're doing with your child, even if you take a walk, integrate the biblical teaching into everything you do. When you take a nature walk, you talk about creation. You talk about the beauties of creation, the glory of God revealed in creation, and so on. You shall bind them as a sign in your hand. They shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. The Bible and the teaching of the Word of God has to be integrated, and it's the parent's specific responsibility to see to it that the Christian receives a distinctly Christian education. Now, the parent does have the authority to delegate certain things, aspects of their teaching, to people who are believers who are going to help them in certain areas. I, my, I want my daughter to take piano lessons. I don't know how to pay, play the piano. I find a good, competent piano teacher. Okay? I might not know calculus. There are certain subjects, if you want to delegate, and if you, if you find a good Christian school and you can afford it, I can't, but if you can afford it and you want to delegate that authority, uh, usually Christian schools are mediocre, but if you can find a good one and you can delegate that authority, that's fine. But your responsibility as a parent is to make sure that they are taught the Christian worldview. They are taught that Jesus Christ is Lord. They are taught the Trinitarian biblical faith. They are taught biblical Christianity, and it's integrated into everything we do. The problem with Christianity today, uh, mainly, is that 
I'm talking about fundamentalism, evangelicalism. Liberalism, of course, is not even close to being Christianity. It's heathenism. But evangelicals tend to split their life up into the sacred and secular. We go to church on Sunday. We go to Sunday school. The rest of the week, you go to public school. You watch secular nonsense on TV. And you don't integrate the biblical teaching into all spheres, into every area of life. We should have Christian agriculture, Christian music, Christian architecture, Christian economics, Christian science, Christian medicine. All these areas have to be integrated. Yes, there's technical aspects. I mean, an operation on a brain is a brain operation. But if you do not have a distinctly Christian medicine, then what's going to happen? You have doctors doing abortions. You have euthanasia. You have infanticide. You have medical boards sitting in hospitals, these ethical medical boards arbitrarily deciding, well, this person can, can die, this person can live, uh, this person, oh, this baby here, let's just let that baby die, and so on. The medical field is rife with heathenism because it's not been integrated with the Christian worldview. Very important. Parents, get responsible. Homeschooling, it's a lot of work, but I'm telling you the rewards for the next generation, you're going to see... A lot of Christian children coming out of homeschooling in the next generation that are going to blow your mind. They're going to be fantastic scientists, educators, and so on. Now, do the public schools teach a religion, and they certainly do, do they teach a religion that is antithetical to biblical Christianity? Brian, this is an excellent question, as usual. And uh, yes, the uh, public schools do teach a religion. Now, we need to establish that first. Uh, the public schools teach a religion. Uh, you cannot uh, have... Uh, uh, a worldview without uh, that worldview being religious. Listen to what our Lord said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 30. He said very simply, He that is not with me is against me. He that is not with me is against me. And what you have in the public schools is you have uh, supposedly a, a legally mandated, mandated religious neutrality. Uh, you have the, the, the public schools cannot uh, uh, teach any religion. Uh, it's based on the, the idea of the separation of church and state, and, and fundamentally that is a biblical idea because uh, the, the church and the state have separate spheres of authority, separate power under God. But uh, the, uh, there is not supposed to be the separation of the state from God. And uh, certainly there should not be the separation of the church from God or the separation of the family for God, from God. All aspects of civil authority, religious authority, and family authority are supposed to be under God. But in the, the schools, what we have today actually is secular humanism that is taught under the guise of neutrality. That somehow if we're just neutral, then we can be secular humanists. But if we are against abortion because God's word says, thou shalt not kill, all of a sudden you're being offensive. You're importing a religious argument into the, into the uh, uh, sphere of public opinion. Now give us a call. We would like to send you a copy of this insightful booklet, Secular Humanism. It exposes the dangerous philosophy that your children are being taught in the public schools if you are, don't have the good sense enough to get them out of the public schools. Here is what they are learning. They're learning a philosophy that begins with a religious idea that man just evolved from pond scum. You need to read uh, this book. And uh, we're offering it tonight absolutely free. Give us a call. We'd be happy to send you your own personal copy. Jesus said... He that is not with me is against me. And if the public schools are mandated to be religiously neutral, that means that they are teaching a worldview which does not have as a component uh, one's basic allegiance to Jesus Christ. And that is a false religion. It is a satanic religion. He that is not with me is against me. There is no neutrality. And uh, that's why we have uh, in the public schools today an obsession with uh, spiritism with uh, observing Halloween. Uh, children are taught to make a big deal about Halloween. Halloween is not Christian. Uh, hallowed evening, somehow before All Saints Day. Poppycush, that's not Christian. There is no All Saints Day in the Bible. Uh, the church should not be observing a church calendar. And Halloween is a, a religious holiday, and it's a... It's a a, a religion that is giving priority to demons, to, uh, to witches, to unchristian and anti-Christian ideas. That's what we have in the public schools today. Brian, can ethics consistently be taught to children apart from biblical Christianity? That's a great question. You know, people are always talking about uh, how 
young people today are wicked. I mean, they're out stealing, they're cheating on their tests, they're smoking pot, they're taking drugs, they're fornicating like wild beasts. And we hear this call in our society, we need to have values education. We need to talk about values in the public schools. Well, the problem is, is they've basically ruled that out logically by ruling out Jesus Christ and ruling out the Bible and ruling out Christianity. You cannot consistently have ethical values apart from Jesus Christ as Lord and the Bible. If you do not have a transcendent God who created all reality, who created us and sustains us, who tells us, who speaks from outside this universe, who is transcendent, speaks to us and gives us moral laws that are absolute and based on his unchanging character, there can be no ethical absolutes. Okay? You go to public schools and the teacher says, well, Johnny, don't steal. Now, if Johnny's a smart little boy, Johnny's going to say, why? And the teacher's going to say, well, it's, it's really not good for the community. Or, you just shouldn't because I say so. Well, if Johnny's consistent, he's going to say, so what? If there is no God who judges, if there is no day of judgment where you have to give an account before God, and if there is no eternal hell where people who deny Christ and people who reject Him, who do not believe in Him as Lord and Savior, if, they, if there's not a hell uh, and, and we just die like dogs, then why not lie? Why not steal? Why not smoke pot? Why not be a total hedonist and go out and fornicate and commit adultery and do anything you want? They teach evolution in the public schools. They teach that we evolved from pond slime, we evolved from apes, and then they wonder why children are consistent with that and fornicate like animals. If the Bible is not true, if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. The only way you can have ethics taught is to teach the Bible. All philosophy, all ethical systems have their basis somehow in some form of a philosophy or a religion. And it is only biblical Christianity which can consistently teach, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that. And if you want to have ethics in school, if you want to teach your children ethics, you have to teach the Bible. And if you don't, I remember when I was growing up and I became an atheist. And I remember teachers lecturing me, don't take drugs, don't uh, have sex with girls, uh, don't smoke pot, don't do that. I, I didn't care a bit. I could care less what they said. Who were they? I was an atheist. If you die and that's it, go ahead. I mean, what's the point? Do whatever you want. Just don't get caught. Get away with it. Just be sneaky. That's all. Act like Bill Clinton. Do whatever you can. Just don't get caught. But the Bible is true. The Bible is the Word of God. God has spoken. And the Ten Commandments stand because they're based on God's nature and character. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not steal. We need ethics. We need to teach ethics. But you can't do it apart from the Bible. Remember that. You know, this is something we need to talk about. Why is the Christian homeschooling movement, which is growing by leaps and bounds just in the past 10 years, so important for the Christian reconstruction of our society. Well, Brian, indeed it is growing uh, by leaps and bounds. As a matter of fact, the very day that this program was recorded, there was a, an article in the Detroit News uh, that uh, said that there are now 1.2 million homeschool students in the United States, a dramatic increase from only 475,000 homeschoolers in 1990. That's over a 100% increase uh, since 1990. That's a phenomenal uh, rate of growth. And I, for one, as a Christian pastor, am very encouraged by the, uh, the rising interest in homeschooling. It indicates that parents are fed up with the amoral, satanic uh, education that many students are getting in the so-called public schools, but which are ba basically the state-supported, tax-supported, mediocre schools that we have in our country. And so they're, they're voting with their feet. They're pulling them out. and. Uh, uh, Actually, there is a parental belief that public education isn't working, and that's true. And a, a study was recently done, and it found that homeschooled children score an average of 37% higher on standardized tests than their public school counterparts. And yet, uh, we have a president, we have a governor that says, more money for the public schools. Uh, that's the problem. We're not giving them enough money. The homeschoolers are educating their children with a theistic worldview. They're teaching them, thou shalt have no other gods before me, and they're doing a much better job. They're scoring 37% higher for a lot less money. And uh, I, for one, am very encouraged by the homeschooling movement. Uh, one criticism of homeschooling is that it does not give children the chance to socialize with peers. And so the, uh, the person that conducted this study was asked about that, and he said, 
Quote, there is no reason to believe that math class is enhanced by students whispering and passing notes to each other. That's the kind of socialization that they're learning, and they're learning uh, to commit uh, immorality, to commit fornication. We need to have the radical uh, transformation of education in our country by parents putting their children in Christian schools and home schools. Thanks for listening, and do tune in again next week. Good night. <laughs>